So, okay. Hi, everybody. This is Getting In Your Business with Coach Sandra. And today I have a very special guest, Susan. Oh, no. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Lem Cool Kovacs? You nailed it. Good ah! job. Usually, usually I ask prior, but I was like, I just wanted to just get going. And uh, I was like, uh oh, I just cut off my nose. But anyway, so for, first of all, uh, you, are, uh, you are a coach, correct? Yes, I am. Okay, so I always like to know, um, although I'm interviewing businesses, I've only had one person that is not a coach because that just seems to be my connections at this point, which is okay. I love it. Um, what kind of, uh, not what kind of coach you are. I want to know why you became a coach and what kind of coach you are from there. Okay, so I'll, I'll try and keep it short because it's a little <laughs> You know the time limits. <laughs> So I'll, I'll hop back to 1985 when I was uh, 24 years old, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And at the time I was an esthetician, so I couldn't do that any longer. Um, ended up going to university, had a, you know, got married, had my daughter, had a good life. Um, and, but there was always something I kept hearing the neurologist's advice in the back of my head, you know, don't do anything to push yourself physically. Uh, you know, avoid stress, which I mean, how do we do that, right? So I, you know, it was a great life, but I really never pushed myself. And I always felt like I was sort of missing something. And after my husband and I separated, we'd been together for, gosh, almost 27 years. Wow. Um, pardon me, I just had something in my That's mind. okay. <laughs> We, uh, so I, I was living on my own for the first time, decided to start working out with a strength coach. And she asked me if I had ever thought about doing a triathlon, which I basically laughed at her and because she knew my story. <laughs> I said, are you crazy? Oh, random question. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, but the funny thing was, I just, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And as a kid, I used to be glued to the Iron Man on TV, right? Like I would watch it all the time. And so I couldn't stop thinking about it. And, and I decided I was going to go for it. Wow. Wow. At time, yeah. At the time, I was also working with a coach myself. And that's when I really realized the power of mindset. Mm. Right? Our mindset affects our performance and how we show up. And so that's when I started looking at becoming a coach myself. So that was almost seven years ago now. Um, yeah, started my training and my initial um, focus and, and client uh, base was elite athletes. So national oh, level. That, oh, so that's how you started your practice. Okay. Cause so, so what would you, how would you describe your coaching practice? Like what, uh, what type of coach are you like who, and who, and who is your client now or has that transitioned? It has transitioned. Yeah. So when COVID hit, and I think this happened to a lot of us, right? So all of a sudden, my teams were no longer practicing or training. Oh, right. Yeah. And I was kind of feeling a little bit lost. So I just by accident, I just decided to start an online group to help people, business owners really navigate what was going on with the, you know, with business during the pandemic, and how do we keep moving forward? And, you know, without feeling guilty for, for trying to grow our business. And that really turned into a change for me. And now I work almost exclusively with business owners, sales professionals, um, helping them to grow their businesses. Wow, that is awesome. Now, um, what what in like what was your main inspiration? Like, what inspires you now to do what you do? Because you were inspired to become a coach. You did have a coach, and you and the power of mindset. But what inspires you, like? Uh, in your in your life right now to to continue doing what you're doing? So I, I think that's a great question. I love that one, Sandra. And I, I think the thing that really inspires me right now is realizing that there's so many people that have dreams that they just don't think that they can accomplish them or achieve them. And I think that's my real purpose right now is for people to understand that, you know, if they have desire for something, you know, like a and, and not an airy fairy desire. Like, let's face it, I'm never going to be an NBA player, even if I want. <laughs> <laughs> In your dreams, yeah, you can, you know, visualize. <laughs> right. But something, if somebody has like a real burning desire to be something, I honestly believe that the, I mean, the universe, spirit, God, whatever it is that you believe in, I don't think that you would be given that desire if it wasn't something that you could achieve. 
I mean, that's just a cruel joke, right? To give yeah. somebody a desire that they would love something and they don't have the ability to believe uh, to achieve it. And I believe that people have, uh, you know, so much potential that is untapped and underutilized. So that that's really my passion. And, and uh, you know, part of my why as well is I have um, two granddaughters and I want them to understand, you know, that they can be, do and have you know, whatever it is that they want in their life. That is, well, that's a fantastic message. And you're obviously setting an example for them. And um, I think we had met once before, just um, because a lot of my connections, I've never met before that I'm doing these interviews. And we had met before. And as I said to you, like, I didn't know that you had MS because, I mean, and it's, and I said this to you when I first met you, like, how would you know? how would you know it's not like you're gonna walk around like i'm in pain all the time or whatever and the fact that you're you are helping other people in your life and you do have um what, what i don't know what you would call it is it autoimmune disorder is that right yeah basically yeah. yes yeah yeah now um let me see what I want to know oh do you have any upcoming projects or things that you're working on that you that you want to share with the LinkedIn people so that they know um, what you're up to? Sure. Actually, I have a free offering that I do every Monday morning, and I call it co-working um, or basically just getting stuff done. And essentially what it is, is we hop on Zoom. Every, it's like being in an office with people working next to you. So we, you know, mute ourselves or initially we, we start the meeting with what are we going to work on? What is it that we want to accomplish? So it might be, you know, reaching out to three people. It might be writing a piece of content, you know, whatever it is that, that somebody has on their plate. And then we mute. Most people leave their cameras on, work, and then come back at the end. And it's sort of like just a, a public accountability. One of the things I find with a lot of my clients is there's a sense of isolation, mm -hmm. right? On our own little islands when we're working. Um, unless we have a big team surrounding us. So that was the reason that I sort of started that. Um, so if anybody's interested, just, That's, you know. That is interesting. So, uh, so what is it? Uh, it's uh, via Zoom. Uh, like how does, can, can, tell me, just give more details on how that works. Sure. So anybody that's interested can just reach out to me. I have a, a separate Zoom link that I that I send out to the participants. And it is, I mean, it's limited numbers can participate because I don't want to spend no. you know, half of the time just announcing what it is that we're working <laughs> on. Um, so limited numbers. And then that's really all it is. It's we hop on Zoom, um, you know, so people might register and can't make it last minute. So I'm always, you know, a little bit flexible. And then we announce and get to work. And it's a, it's a great way, I think. And then, I mean, I do it as much for myself as for anybody else, right? It, it does. It keeps you accountable. When you, when you want people to be accountable, you have to be accountable, especially if that's what the whole part of the idea is. Um, but I th I'm sure there's a lot of people that would be interested because it's a great way for, for you to connect. Like that's one of the reasons I'm doing this is, is to connect people with others that may go, Hey, I, I followed her before. I've seen some of her posts. She's interesting, but they don't really know why you're doing what you're doing. And this kind of can help that. And I think what you're doing with that, it's, it's free. So people can kind of not take that chance and then go, Oh, this is, this is what I'm really looking for. I want more of that. And I think that when we, as coaches offer free things that it allows people that may be curious, but they don't want to take the leap yet. It gives them a little taste. It's like a taste test. Exactly. Exactly. And I know in the conversation that I had with you as well earlier that, you know, you as well are all about giving, right? So helping people and sharing. And, and that's really, you know, what this is. And as I said, it, you know, I, it works for me too, because I tend to get it. <laughs> a lot a lot done in that time so yeah how long is the session so it's going to be 90 minutes I, I used to be 60 minutes i'm changing it to 90 minutes just so that we have enough time now if people need to hop off that's fine if they need to come on later you know that's fine as well there's no hard and fast rule around it again it's really just a place for people to show up and and get some work done and and also make connections with other people yeah so is there back and forth with the group 
uh, why you're doing that? Or is it more just focus on like, this is what we're doing and you kind of have like a, uh, a structure? Very much a structure. Um, however, people do get to when they see the same faces over and over again, and they hear what they're working on, they might be intrigued or, you know, have questions for that person. So people have tended to develop their own relationships outside of, um, you know, the, the actual Zoom meeting that, that we have. Okay, so again, I'm still learning as we're as we're talking about this. So what I'm understanding is that each week, like there's, there might be new people joining, but you do have people that do it on a weekly basis? Yes, that's correct. Yes. That is really, yeah. that is really generous of you to do that because you don't have to do that. And I, I think what you're talking about giving is really important because some people, you're always going to have people who want things for free. And then you're going to have people that want to pay a little bit. And then you have those people that are, are all in. And I think that it's really important that we offer a variety of things for people at times. Not everybody's like that. But I think for because you're going to have people that want to taste test, right? And then you've got those are I'm all in. And it's nice to be able to be diverse enough to be able to offer a little bit here and there for the different types of people and mindsets. And then those a lot of those will convert as well which is really important so um i think that's i think that workshop sounds really interesting like i i might i'm actually might be interested myself <laughs> so <laughs> so um but uh yeah so are there is there anything else that that you would like to share with the community anything that we have missed um because i uh, now we know what kind of coach you are who you coach and uh, a promotion that, that you do every week. Is there anything else other than your coaching practice, which I'm sure um, you're probably booked up for, but anything else that you wanna share with the community that you want them to know? Yeah, you know what, I am always, deep down, and I think maybe because I didn't make the cheerleading team in school. <laughs> <laughs> I have this cheerleader in me. And so I love just cheering people on. So I am, you know, if somebody is, you know, struggling, if they would like, you know, I do offer um, sessions to people, you know, they're limited, obviously, I can't do it all the time. Um, but I do have sessions for people. So again, reach out if there's something that you're stuck on, that, you know, we might be able to work through, I'm more than happy to hop on a zoom call. Um, and then if you just need a way to go, or, you know, somebody patting you on the back to keep you going, I'm there for you. So, awesome. you know, Please give me a follow if you're if you're not already, and I try and I try and you know keep it light and uh, and inspiring. Awesome, I love it. So as um, so anybody who wants to follow, connect, work with Susan, participate in her workshops, please. The her information is going to be in the header of this, and this should be released sometime in. Well, I'm not going to say because the people don't care. They don't know. <laughs> and I will tell you after when it will be released. But I'm really excited to speak with you. Thank you so much, Susan, for your time. And we'll talk soon. Yeah, and thank you so much, Sandra, for doing this. I mean, I have just so enjoyed watching the um, sessions that you've already done with other people. And I've learned so much about them. So I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to do this and offer this for your audience. Well, thank you so much. I mean, again, I was I started this out of curiosity and and my curiosity is even more so after I speak to someone, I go, I didn't know that. I mean, because I usually, all I do is I look at the profile before I do this, because most people I don't know at all. And because we had met before, I knew a little bit more about you. But even today I said, oh, I didn't know she had that workshop. So that's why I asked more questions, because I didn't know. But, uh, but thank you so much. Um, have a wonderful rest of your day, everybody. And thanks for watching. Bye. Thanks.